up fellow collectors and welcome to Long's Toys. Today we are taking a look at Decepticon Slicer with Exosuit from the Transformers Shattered Glass line from Hasbro. Uh, so real quick, Slicer was a Decepticon repaint of Wheeljack done back in the Action Master line in G1. And I believe he was exclusive to Europe. I believe the line had died here by then, but was still coming out in Europe. So I don't think Slicer was ever available over here in Action Master form. Uh, the other thing that's kind of interesting is, even though it is a repaint of Wheeljack, it was a Decepticon, and now in Shattered Glass, the Decepticons are the heroes. So you're kind of going full circle there uh, with him kind of being a good guy again because he looks like Wheeljack. It's very confusing. Uh, but the other thing that's kind of funny is this looks like a deluxe class release, but it's actually two deluxe class releases because Exosuit is a repaint of Fast Track from Earthrise, I want to say. And he is just packed in to the bottom of this box in all his little pieces. So I think that's kind of funny. When you look at this from the front, it just looks like a normal uh, deluxe release but there's actually a complete second Transformer hidden down in here. So uh, packaging is beautiful. I love the shattered glass packaging. I love the color scheme and everything. Really cool artwork of Slicer on the side and on this little piece right here. Uh, spinning around over here, we see some more artwork for Slicer. And then over here on the back, you can see the product shots for Slicer in robot mode and vehicle mode, as well as Exosuit. I guess the character's not getting a name. Back in the G1 Action Master release, the Exosuit actually was an Exosuit that Slicer would ride in, but then it would also transform into like a four-wheeler, I think. So they're trying to replicate that here with one of the weaponizers uh, being fast track. So you can see, of course, he's going to come apart into all his little pieces and you can build armor and stuff over here for Slicer. So it should be a lot of fun. So I'm going to go ahead and get these guys out of the packaging here and we'll take a closer look. So here are Slicer and Exosuit out of the packaging. And the first thing I got to say is they look slick. These are two really, really good color schemes for these characters, uh, especially Slicer, especially when we get to vehicle mode. It's really sleek, but he looks great. Uh, not to count out Exosuit, he looks good. I do wish they kind of gave him a name. Exosuit is so boring. I get it. It's a reference to the original G1 Action Master, but just give the guy a name. I mean, Exosuit, come on. But it's a really great repaint of Fast Track. I think it looks really cool. The pink, the black, the red all really work well together. Uh, simple repaint for the head, but I like it a lot. It's simple. It's just black with a silver visor, but it looks good. You got this pink working with the red. I don't know why, but when I look at this now, I kind of see like a skull face. I think that's kind of cool. It's just a really nice repaint. They both are really, really cool. I'm not going to go through these too much um, just because, you know, we've seen these figures multiple times already. So I'll go through articulation and whatnot pretty quickly. I'm not going to go through a hundred different possibilities with Fast Track here. We know he can become the sword. You can make him into guns, put him on the back, all that stuff you can do with weaponizers. I'm not going to go through all that stuff. Uh, I'm just going to try to replicate that weird buggy and we'll get into that a little bit later on. Uh, so anyway, he has a head swivel side to side. You have a hinge up and down here in the shoulder. This can rotate around because it just pegs on so that can move around. You have a swivel here at the bicep 360. You have nice 90 degree bend there at the elbow. You can rotate the wrist. Now you do have these like gun pieces that peg into the fists, but if you want to just use the fists, they're right there so you can hold normal weapons or whatever you want. But he does come with these silver gun pieces, which I think look pretty good. You have a rotation here in the waist. You can kick really far forward. You can kick decently far back. It does hit the back piece here. But again, you can always take this off if you really want. So you could just take this piece completely off and then you could kick ridiculously back high. <laughs> That's pretty fun. Uh, you can kick out to the side, of course. You have a thigh swivel there, again, because this just pegs in there. Uh, really nice movement there at the knee because of the transformation. You have ankle tilt. So he's got great articulation and he just looks really, really cool. I like it a lot. Now, again, because he is a weaponizer, you can kind of take him apart, put him together however you want, make him into guns, shields, swords, all kinds of crazy stuff. Your imagination is the limit, so I'm not going to go through a ton of that there. But we're going to put him off to the side for a moment, and we will take a look at Slicer. This is another really great repaint. He looks so good. He comes with these two translucent red weapons that I actually like. I'm not usually a huge fan of translucent weapons. But I think these are kind of cool. And I'm almost kind of getting like Energon downshift vibes from these. So I would not be surprised if we eventually see this done or tweaked in some way to become Energon downshift. I would not be surprised. We'll see how that goes. I mean, really all you'd have to do is like remove the spoiler. Maybe a slight bit of remolding. 
Uh, but you can see this nice Energon weapon here. Now it does have a hinge, which that'll come into play a little bit later on, but really nicely detailed. And then this one is the same thing, got a kind of double barrel blaster here. I really like both of these quite a bit, but I'm going to put them off to the side for the moment and we'll run through articulation very quickly. He does have this piece here that you can put on the side. Uh, if you don't want to include that, you can take it off. You can have him use it as a, a weapon in his hand. So you do have that option as well. Head sculpt looks great. Again, it's just wheeljack, but that's a really nice color scheme. I like the gold. The eyes are a little recessed, but you can see they're painted red. At least hopefully you can see that. The head does swivel from side to side. It's kind of on a ball joint, but it's really just this piece here that you use for the transformation. And that can kind of sink in. So really, it's mostly just a swivel side to side. You have this hinge here, actually in the shoulder part of the body. Uh, you have a rotation there, and then you have another hinge in the actual shoulder part. You do have a bicep swivel, 90 degrees there in the elbow. You have a wrist swivel, waist swivel kick out to the side pretty far, kick pretty far forward, kick decently back. You do start to run into uh, hitting into this a little bit, but not too bad. Got a thigh swivel there, 90 degrees in the knee. And then of course we got ankle tilt. There's all kinds of movement here with the leg because of the transformation. So a lot of forward and back movement. And then of course we have ankle tilt as well. It's kind of funny. Like I know this mold is not super old, it's from Earthrise, but it already kind of feels clunky. Like, I still like it a lot, but, you know, the, the feet are huge, and the arms seem a little too long. It's just a little clunky. I feel like this just shows how far they've come with what they're currently doing uh, for brand new stuff. Again, not to put this mold down. I still think it holds up. I still think it's pretty great. But you can just kind of see already even just from a couple years ago that they've come a long way in terms of engineering but yeah these guys are pretty neat a lot of articulation great color schemes really really solid uh i guess the first thing i'm gonna do is try to turn him into the buggy so again the original g1 action master this guy literally was an exosuit that he could ride in so you can kind of replicate that by taking him apart and, and making him into whatever armor you want for him you have so many spots you can peg stuff in all around the body. You can peg pieces on here and then use like the crotch of him to kind of angle the guns over the shoulder and all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to go through all that. But the exosuit could also kind of transform into like a little vehicle. And that's not in the instructions. So the instructions give you like three or four options for turning him into like the giant sword or, you know, shoulder cannons or a bunch of other weapons, but they don't show the buggy at all. And that's kind of, it's not, I guess, not official to the instructions, but there's a lot of people online who've kind of made like fan-made modes. And I know they showed it on one of the streams when they announced this guy. Uh, so it is, you know, technically unofficial, but also kind of official. So I'm going to try to replicate that as best I can from what I've seen in pictures, just to give you an idea, because I was trying to find somewhere to, to get instructions and I couldn't really find anything, so I wanted to provide that for you guys. So let's go ahead and try to turn him into the vehicle mode for Slicer. All right, so I've gone ahead and removed the two guns in the hands, and then I'm going to go ahead and remove the arms. I'm going to remove this back piece. I'm going to pop this chest section off like that, and then I'm going to pop the legs off. So basically disassemble them completely. We're going to straighten this out, fold the toe down, do the same over here. And then what you want to do is take the arms. Oh, and I forgot about this little piece. They tell you to just put that on the back of the arm. This is mostly included. So when you transform them into the sword, it has a point to the sword. That's really all this piece exists for. But uh, we're going to take the arms and we're going to pop them in to the legs directly like that. And then kind of bend them up and then kind of turn them like this and then kind of put these at like a 45 degree angle. So you want to do that again over here. And then you take this chest piece and kind of pop it in the hands onto what were the shoulder pieces. Like this, I think. And this kind of forms like the basis. Let me angle this down so you can actually see what I'm doing. 
So this kind of forms like the back of the little vehicle. And it's not great, but um, from what I've seen, some people leave this piece off, some people pop it on, but you can flip this up and kind of pop this on here almost as like a headrest. But you're basically just kind of making like a big lounge chair. Um, now what I tried to do at first was take these and I tried to fit them underneath here because you do have these cutouts as a way to keep the legs together like do this but then feed this around but then there's no way to get his legs underneath there's just not enough clearance so what i found to do is uh push him up at the waist so he's completely sitting 90 degrees and then utilize these two connections on the back of his leg to peg into these two pegs here so you kind of peg you might want to lean this back a little bit uh, but it will probably fall apart on you at least six times i mean that's just how it works so peg this in and you want to kind of make sure that this piece is on the side over here. And then we're going to peg this in over here, like so, and kind of use him to keep the legs together. And then kind of just pop this like that. And that's not great. It really just looks like he's laying on a beach. But the last thing you can do is take this. And what I've done, I've seen a lot of pictures of this kind of between his legs, almost like a steering wheel. Um, what I've done is just kind of have this sit, because there is an empty cavity on the inside of his leg, and I just kind of have this sit in the empty cavity of his leg, and so that way you can kind of just sit there and, and kind of look like a steering wheel, and then you can kind of put the hands up there, and then most people drop this on top like this. So, kind of... Um, I appreciate it. I mean, here's the thing. They're taking a mold that's already two, three years old at this point, and they're trying to make something that can kind of be an homage to like a four-wheeler the Action Master had back in the day. I get that it's not going to be perfect. It's just, hey, this is what we have to work with. How can we configure it into something that kind of looks like a vehicle? And they've kind of done it. I mean, it's not terrible. It's certainly not amazing. But I mean, it's fun. It's goofy. It kind of works. If you really want to trick it out, you can kind of add more of the guns. You can kind of peg them on here, maybe. Something like this. I'm just making this up as I go. Maybe put this one here. Or peg them onto his arms if you'd rather do that. Again, your imagination is the limit. I mean, these things are meant to come apart into multiple pieces and be configured however you want. So if you want to build your own buggy thing, if you can come up with something better, by all means. Uh, but I think this is kind of close to what they did on that stream. The kind of official, unofficial, you know, vehicle mode for Exosuit. And it's fine. It's not great. It's not terrible. It's okay. You know, I, like I said, they didn't set out to make a vehicle for him to ride that could transform into a robot. They had a robot already from years ago that they said, what can we do with the pieces we have to make a vehicle for this robot that were never meant to work together previously? And keeping that all in mind, it's all right. All right, so I've got Exosuit put back together here so we can kind of just go through his normal transformation. And basically what you're going to do is pull this piece off the back, put that off to the side for the moment, and then you're going to kind of pop this front torso piece off as well. And I'll almost always have this pink piece flip down, but just pop that back on. So then you're going to take this, you're going to rotate these pieces up like so. You are going to kind of smoosh the legs in together, and then you are going to flip this around like this and then you can see that there are little tab slots here for these little tabs so this will drop down and peg into place very simply like that there you go then you're going to take this piece here and you're going to flip the head around 180 then you can raise the arms up and then rotate them at the bicep 180 degrees like so and then you can see that there are two little tabs right there, which are going to go into these little tab spots right here. 
So go ahead and pop that on like so. And then you're going to take this piece. And this is going to... Actually, I guess I should do this first. These two big tabs or pegs right there are going to go into these two peg holes. So peg that in. And then you can see that there are two more tab spots right here. Which are going to go in there while you're simultaneously lining these up. So that's going to go on like that and then drop down like that and then there you go that is his kind of traditional vehicle mode when he's just transforming by himself and cruising around uh it's fine there's not too much to it it really just kind of looks like he is sitting 90 degrees and staring into his backpack and then <laughs> driving around with his arms extended it's fine though let me straighten that out you can still really get all the arm articulation that you'd like because they're just his arms right there. There's not really anything else to it. But uh, it rolls decently. And he's just got his whole chest plate there on the back. So it's an okay little vehicle mode. All right, so next up we'll go through Slicer's transformation. It's the exact same transformation as Earthrise Wheeljack. So I'm going to go through it fairly quickly. Uh, but you're going to start by kind of putting the arms out to the side. Straight like that. And then you're just going to rotate these pieces because you're kind of lining up the side of the vehicle mode. So you kind of line that up and then rotate the wrist so you can kind of see the entire side section of the vehicle mode there. Line that up. Then we are going to come to the spoiler and just rotate this around like so. Then you are going to lift up the midsection and drop it down. The head will rotate 180 degrees like that. While this is all still down like this, you're going to want to rotate at the waist 180 degrees. And then you want to kind of bring the hips down so that they're not in the way. So that you can then kind of line this up because that's where that's going to stay. Then you're going to come down here. And I find that this leg is a little weird. And I have to kind of make sure, like when I use the ankle tilt, it like unhooks this piece weird. And I have to make sure that it fits back in there correctly before it'll allow it to go back in. But we got it going. Then we can do the same over here. Then we're going to take this whole section and kind of pop it out to the side. And once you have clearance, you're going to flip up this little window piece. And then you can see that that's going to fit into this little groove right here. So this is going to pop out to the side. Flip this up. And then you can close that in like this and that will all peg in together once we have that lined up correctly so clip that in and then this whole section is going to clip up and you can see that there are two little peg holes right there and these pegs up here are going to drop into them so kind of lift this up get that all lined up and that is pretty much the whole car you're almost done at this point you're going to lift these sections up with that shoulder hinge and there are these two little spots right here. And there are these little tabs right there and there that are going to pop into those. So as you bring this up, that is going to drop in there. And then once you do that, you can fold in the arm to do the back section of the car. And then it's just lining up the panels. So bring this up. Drop that in. Why is that not lining up? I seem to always have trouble with this one. I don't really know why. I swear it could do it. It's a little hard to shine light in there. Here we go. Get this in. There we go. Then you can bring this in and click this panel up. And there you go. There is Slicer's vehicle mode. And I think this looks really sharp. I love the color scheme for this. The black and the blue are perfect. You got a little bit of that translucent red just to add a pop of color. Silver over here for the wheels. You have kind of a cool matte finish here on the back, which I think looks really cool. I like this a lot. I really, really like this a lot. You can bring those guns back in, and that's where you'll utilize the hinge. Because then you can peg them in here on the back, and they will wrap around to the sides. So bring this in peg that in there and now you can have the guns on the side like that which is really cool if you want to put this up top here you can do that as well so you have a lot of options for 
the guns, but I just think this looks so sleek and I absolutely love this color scheme. And I just think this looks really, really, really good. I think this is a really fun set. I mean, right off the bat, these are two fantastic color schemes. And I know Slicer had these colors since the original Action Master, but it was a great color scheme then, and it looks even better on this figure. I think Exosuit looks really great as well. I kind of still wish they would have just come up with a new name for him. I know back in the day, he wasn't a robot. He was just like an Exosuit in a, a vehicle, so it didn't need a name. But you made him a robot, so come on, give him a cool name. Uh, but in any case, color scheme's fantastic. There's not really much new to talk about in terms of transformation and, and, and articulation. We've seen these figures before. I mean, they're, they're a couple years old at this point. But I do think it's funny. While I think both of these molds still hold up, I feel like the Wheeljack mold is a little clunky. Like, the arms just seem a little too big to me. I don't know, the proportions are just a little off, and I didn't really notice it at the time, but I think it's a testament to how far they've come in the past two or three years, what they're doing in terms of, you know, all the engineering and everything. Because while I still think this is a good figure, it just feels like it's not up to the level of what they've been doing currently, so I think that's kind of a good thing, because it shows how far they've come. But again, I still think these are two really solid molds, I think they still hold up. I think Slicer is probably my favorite out of the two. I just love that color scheme so much and the vehicle mode looks so sharp. But I actually do really like Exosuit a lot more than I thought I was going to. Uh, you know, the fast track mold is what it is. I mean, the transformation and everything, it's a lot of parts forming and stuff like that. But that's kind of the whole point of the weaponizer, so I can't really ding it for that. Uh, but yeah, I think they're fun. I mean, first off, it's just nice to get some more heroic Decepticons in this line because I feel like Shattered Glass has been very heavy on the evil Autobots, so I'm very happy to get some more heroic Decepticons. And it's still kind of confusing me because I look at this and I want to think Wheeljack, so it should be a uh, evil Autobot, but because Slicer was a Decepticon, now he's a heroic Decepticon. It's very confusing for me, but <laughs> I still like it a lot. I think this is a really nice addition to the line, and I do appreciate that they tried to come up with some kind of vehicle mode for Exosuit to turn into... Uh, I wish they had put the official directions in the instructions, though. I don't know why they didn't really do that. Like, we saw them do it on the stream, so it's kind of endorsed by them, but not enough to make it into the instructions, which I thought was weird. Uh, but again, I understand it's not like they made a new toy to turn into a vehicle for him. They had to take something existing and do the best they could with it. And given that, it's not terrible, honestly. It's okay. And I at least appreciate that they tried, because that was a big part of the original G1 Action Master toy, was having that exosuit transform into the vehicle. And obviously these things can be exosuits because the weaponizers have always been transforming, coming apart, forming cannons and all kinds of stuff. So that part was already well covered. So the fact that they tried and attempted to make some kind of vehicle mode for them, I at least appreciate the effort. But I think it's a fun release. I definitely recommend checking it out. Uh, Shattered Glass is all exclusive to Hasbro Pulse. So if you're looking for this one, you'd have to check over there. But like I said, I think it's a fun release. Just when you go to look at the listing, don't be shocked by the price because you are getting two full deluxes. So the box makes it look like it's just one deluxe, but there really are two full deluxes inside. Still a little pricey even given that, but it's better. <laughs> but yeah, I think this is a fun release. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks so much for watching.